the midterms are over. It was not a red wave, as we well, they're not. They're not fully over. They're basically over. We can conclusively say there was no red wave. <laughs> That's true. The the Republicans won. I mean, they increased their representation, but it was more just a regular midterm election that breaks against the president. It wasn't anything special, which most people, based on the macro situation, thought that uh, it might be way better than that. But then again, keep in mind people's understanding of a macro situation, it's subjective. It's not some sort of concrete. um, It's not like a football game where you start with a 10-point lead on the scoreboard. It's more like a football game where people just think that one team is a lot better than the other team. But, you know... Who knows if that if that's true? That's just uh, you know what people think beforehand. But based on people's impression, the GOP definitely underperformed historically, right? There's, no, historically, uh, I think it's pretty average. Historically, it was just an average midterm. But they thought Biden it should be better. Claiming wasn't Biden claiming that this was no, you know that's BS. Uh, worse, it's just an, worse it's, than average? I would say it's average. Uh, like based on the number of uh, seats lost in midterms, I think. Maybe that was the it's pretty winter. it's pretty normal though it's pretty just run of the mill midterm, right? I wouldn't say it's a victory for him. A victory him for him would be winning seats. Winning or losing is basically how well you did against expectations, but expectations are built on not factual things necessarily. Like people, we would say that well, we should have won more seats because, well, inflation, the number of Americans who don't approve of Biden. The number of Americans who say America's on the wrong track, those would all lead us to believe that structurally this was set up for a red wave. However, there is the elephant in the room, which is that we a lot of the exit poll data said that many voters cared about abortion. That is also a structural concern. <laughs> we can't mm-hmm. ignore that. So perhaps this structurally was not set up to be a red wave either. So did they underperform? against the structural expectation maybe maybe not maybe people's structural expectation or understanding of the structural environment was just incorrect they underplayed how important abortion was to a lot of voters and you you can say well then maybe the republicans strategically shouldn't have they shouldn't have overturned roe v wade you could say that they probably would have won more votes in this midterm but my response to that would just be that if you believe that abortion is a moral issue and that it's literally a matter of life and death, then it wouldn't be justified to not act on it just because you think you'd have an electoral advantage in the next election. That's not the, that's not defensible, obviously. If you, if you think that half a million people would die because you sat on this, could you sit on it just so you can win some more votes in the next election? I don't know. That doesn't seem morally defensible. So there's a bunch of Republicans who think it's a moral issue. They think it's mm-hmm. a matter of life and death, and so therefore they acted on it. And this is the result we have today. I mean, but in terms of practical outcome, you know, did, was there really a lot to be gained from overturning Roe v. Wade versus now what you know the potential of what we lost? Yes. I think that there will be fewer abortions because they overturn Roe v. Wade. And if you're of the opinion that each one is a life saved, then I have to imagine you're still happy with the result Mm -hmm. because thousands and thousands of lives are saved according to your point of view. I think most people, if if they were confronted with the choice of saving thousands of lives versus, oh, my, my team wins some more votes, if you were... Uh, a moral person, you would choose to save lives. <laughs> I would mm-hmm. assume, as opposed to winning a few, uh, winning some more seats in the next election, and that is a choice they made. So, I I would say that structurally, it wasn't as as favorable as people thought. Because number one, because abortion was on the table, they ran on it, and they ran the Democrats ran successfully. They made it an issue, and number two. They were still able to run against Trump somehow. He's not even the president of the United States. They were still able to run against him. And it's clear that he's a very polarizing person who galvanizes the left to come to the polls. But just going back to the Roe v. Wade thing. So does it make sense logically to vote Democrat just because 
you know, Roe v. Wade was overturned in the Supreme Court. Like, like no, it doesn't make more... sense. It doesn't make sense. Right. But people it, don't vote logically; it... they vote emotionally. Right. But I'm saying it makes more sense. Like, it's more about uh, this would more be like a state legislature thing, right? Correct. But again, people do not vote logically; they vote emotionally. Yeah. That's why it matters how tall your candidate is. Obviously, it doesn't matter whether a person can do it. It doesn't affect whether a person can do a job, whether he's six foot four or he's five foot two. And yet you will never see a president who's five foot two. Right. Because I, I people vote it, emotionally. I, I agree with that. I'm just saying that it still should be pointed out that these are not. Yeah, uh, it it. Yeah. It's it, just emotional who reaction. you vote into Congress has no impact on whether or not your state has abortion. For instance, California just enshrined abortion into its constitution. Every woman in California is totally safe to have an abortion. It doesn't matter who you elected to Congress. California could elect all Republicans to Congress, and yet every single woman in California would still be able to get an abortion because it's in the California Constitution now. Yep. Roe v. Wade, if you're thinking about this logically, only remanded or they kicked back the, the, the choice or the decision to the states. Your state gets to decide now. In California, the state decided that abortion is perfectly legal at many stages of pregnancy. In Arkansas, probably not the same. But who you elect to Congress has zero impact on that. But again, that's not how people vote. They vote emotionally. So when you have congressional members talking it up and making an issue, they can get votes that way. I guess it, you know, it, it helps. Uh, it could help in the, you know, I guess, what if there's one of the Supreme Court justices uh, dies or something? I guess it could it could help, right? How who you elect to Congress? Maybe. Yeah. I mean, potentially, it will have very little impact. But certainly, who you elect to Congress makes no difference. They don't even confirm Supreme Court justices. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't matter. People they just know that the Republicans struck down Roe v. Wade. A lot of voters were scared of that, and they came out to vote for their Democratic congressman. Even though these two things have no relation to each other, it doesn't matter. It just, just does not matter, right? People do not vote logically, necessarily. They just voted in a guy who has brain damage to be a senator. It's not about logic. It's usually about feelings. It's usually about emotion, you know, and, it's, and whatever preconceived notions you have about different parties and different people. I think even, even if they understood that, a lot of people, because they think that abortion is a moral issue would still would still do it the same way if they had had it to do over again and i can't argue with that if you think it's a life and death matter then sure but this was the cost that we had to pay that's all i'm saying we we and we paid it it wasn't just up to abortion though i think they successfully ran against trump again because certain candidates were fully on board with trump's you know fatuous insistence on relitigating 2020 and that hurt them, so I that had that had a, that had had an impact. I think you saw candidates such as Kerry Lake and Oz run behind their polling because of an anti-Trump sentiment. Mm -hmm. I think he was an albatross. I think he was a drag on certain candidates, and you saw the candidates that didn't have that, like Kemp, ran perfectly fine and were very successful. So there were certain things working against them. That I think people just didn't take into account. Um, but what I will say, what I want to bring up is that this this midterm could it's not a win. It may not be the loss, everyone thinks, because they the 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 logic that it's a loss is that well, structurally it was set up for a big red wave. Hmm. Well, you may have just misinterpreted the real structure of the election. I will say that the result could there could be a silver lining in the result and the first silver lining is that it offers some clarity for 2024 Republicans, which is that if you have a brain, <laughs> this is my opinion, if you have a brain, if you're a rational thinking person, you have to understand that DeSantis is the, for the way forward. He is the future. He ran way ahead in Florida. He dominated a state that until very recently was a purple state. And you know what? It could really even still be a purple state. You just It's just masked by his immense popularity. So there's some clarity moving forward about what the future should look like. And the other silver lining is this actually helps Biden's case for 2024. Now, imagine if the Republicans picked up like something crazy, like 80 seats, and they 
destroyed the Senate. They picked up like uh, they won fifty six seats in the Senate or something. Can you imagine mm. how much pressure there would be for Biden to step aside? It would be an abject mm-hmm. failure on his part, and this would be behind the scenes. This would be ammo for people like Gavin Newsom, for everybody, probably everybody else in power on the Democratic side, because you know nobody thinks that Biden is their best chance. They'd have this ammo to kick him aside. They could even run a primary challenger against him. He doesn't even necessarily have to step aside. Remember, even if you're a sitting president, you technically still have to win your primary. It's not given to you. Mm-hmm. The only reason why it seems that way is because typically the party just doesn't run anybody of consequence. And so it seems like the sitting president runs unopposed. But technically, he's not running unopposed. He has to win the primary, just like mm-hmm. anybody else, to be the nominee. And if the that Democrats don't it. want that, then they don't have to let him have that. Yeah. I mean, if that happened, it would be a clear sign of a, a rift, right? There, <laughs> they, the it would be. It yeah. would be. And of course, there'd be more of a rift because Biden failed them. And there's no way he can win 2024. And they have this ammo to unseat him. Even if he doesn't want to go away, they can make him go away. They can fight him. They can, un- they can just primary him. It's unprecedented, but it could happen. And he's an unprecedented president. He has dementia. So they could unseat him. Gavin Newsom's a much better candidate than Biden. It would be bloody for them. But at the end of the day, they could have a candidate who's better than Biden. This midterm pretty much eliminates that as a possibility. I don't see how the party could muster enough support to primary him because he, quote unquote, he fought off the red wave. (laughs) <laughs> it's not going that bad. I mean, you can always point to his favorability ratings, but in the actual votes, it didn't turn out very poorly. I don't think that they can muster a real challenge. And it would make people like Newsom more hesitant to make a naked power grab. He would come in for sure if Biden stepped aside. Of course he would. But if Biden doesn't step aside, I don't think a person like Newsom at this point would run against them in a primary. Just just a naked challenge. I don't think that would happen. And so what happens is that Democrats are going to want a man who currently has dementia, who's going to be two years older, and we can only assume about as unpopular as he, he is today. That's who they're running for president. And so that's the silver lining. You, I'm not trying to say that in losing or in underperforming, the GOP has really won. No, no. Losing or underperforming. Losing is losing. Underperforming is underperforming. However, there is a per, there is perhaps this silver lining that will be realized in 2024 that I think I think people should at least consider. And if that helps you sleep at night, try to argue against this logic. But because I think the logic is pretty sound. Biden is strengthened for 2024, which is bad for Democrats, and Trump is weakened. And DeSantis is emboldened, which I think is strong for Republicans. I know that anybody who li- who's listening who's, you know, a Republican or conservative or just a, a populist, right? It's easy to interpret this as a very disappointing, but there is that silver lining. Oh, and the other silver lining is the GOP uh, sent a, a woman to Congress who was uh, kind of like just a hot IG model, Anna Paulina Luna. Hmm. And we're always for more and more attractive women. So now the GOP has its own AOC. Isn't that isn't that wonderful? It, uh, what about her? I want to say I wanted to say IQ, but I was trying to find a different word compared to AOC. Is she as dumb as AOC is? I have no idea. She I don't know. I wouldn't assume she's super intelligent, but who knows? I I haven't listened to much of. Was she? Well, she has this going for her. She was in the Air Force, whereas AOC was just a. She got a useless degree and was a bartender, so mm. her history is pretty useless. Whereas uh, I would assume being in the Air Force is at least of you know a little bit more productive. That sounds very non-trivial. Not that being a bartender is necessarily trivial. And I think the other thing we should be thankful for, and I was one of these people, we should be thankful that the Democrats sent a man with brain damage to the Senate. We should be really happy about that, not because the seat was lost, but because this can always be held over their heads in perpetuity. Wait, but not only uh, is he in the Senate, but there's actual, it seems, non-ironic talk suggesting that he, he's... That uh, he could run for president? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> I hope they do. I really hope they do. And the fact that they would talk like this about him just shows how weak the Democratic bench is. How the hell can you talk about this guy as a potential presidential nominee? It's the same reason why they talk about Mayor Pete as a potential presidential nominee, because their bench is so weak. And I don't understand why it is. They have plenty of senators. Why do they Biden, not like them? Biden won, though. So like, I, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, if Biden can win, I think Fetterman can win, too. He probably can. Yeah. And I wouldn't even be that sad. It would just be, uh, I guess, more evidence that our reality split off with the Hadron Collider or something. It's just emblematic of where we are at in 2022. And to be fair, and I think we've talked about this, it's just you vote for your team no matter what. So to be fair, that goes for both sides. We were wondering, would Republicans vote for a brain damage if it came to that? And the yep. answer is a lot of them would, of course, yeah. So it's not yeah. really, since we haven't, you can't, you can't get us on that. So uh, I, I openly admit I, I would have also voted for a. Uh... I won't admit that if, if there was a Republican <laughs> candidate that it's here's not here's the thing I wouldn't I would still feel I would still feel I prefer that candidate over a Democrat because I don't want woke bullshit to encroach upon my life. So at least this is a vote against that. And even with brain damage, he can, you know, he can go in and vote the right way. However, I think I might still vote against him just because of the embarrassment. Hmm. Just because I don't want that <laughs> to be held over me for the rest of my life that we yeah, voted for this true. guy, you know? So for that yeah. reason, I might vote against him. Yeah. My, my opinion could be changed on that. But I would, per I would prefer him. I really would. Mm-hmm. But I, I think I'd still vote against him just, just because of appearances and how embarrassing it is. It was a very tough situation for them, in fairness, because he had a stroke right before the, uh, the primary. So they had to decide, do we switch to a different person? Or do we hope that he can recover quickly? Because it's not clear how quickly you'd recover from a stroke. It could be very quick. It could be never. Hmm. All possibilities are on the table. And so it was a very tough position for them, and they just had to make a call. And, well, they made the call to stick with him, which didn't turn out well because he didn't ever recover from a stroke. But I guess you could argue it did turn out well because they still won the seat. But why they won the seat, we'll go into later. I think that had a lot to do with the GOP putting up a bad candidate themselves. Hmm. Anyway, that is our take on this non-red wave, this red trickle, this average performance, this underwhelming performance, whatever you want to call it.